At this time, uh, Richard and Shelley's oldest daughter, Shelby, is going to pay tribute. And I knew this day would come at some point in my life. Um, however, I didn't think it would come so soon. And there's so much I want to say about my dad, but I would have to stand up here forever to do that. I've tried to find all the perfect words and to formulate all the right thoughts for this. But as I got up to preach last Wednesday for the first time ever, my dad sent me this text. He said, sometimes it feels overwhelming, but I'm here to tell you everything will be okay. You got this. Remember that no matter what, me and your mom got your back, always and forever. Have fun tonight. Speak from your heart and don't look back. You will do great. I know you will, no doubt. I love you. I don't think he knew that this text would actually mean more than just another Wednesday night for me. It would actually be the text that would send me into speaking at his funeral a few days later. I know many of you knew my father as an officer. You may have seen him in his uniform with a badge and a squad car, but I saw my dad in a different fashion, always in his plaid pajama pants, book in hand in his silver Ford F-150. Home has felt lonely without him here. I keep waiting for him to pull up in the driveway to come inside and tell us about some crazy car chase he got into, or maybe even how terrible the 7-Eleven taquitos were for lunch. <laughs> you never knew it was always a surprise what he had gotten into that day. However, there was no heavier surprise than to receive a call that your dad had been shot and killed. It will be a day I never forget. I remember having conversations with my dad about him losing friends and officers in the line of duty. I have heard all the stories you can think of, but I've always had such a hard time with how the suspect is dealt with. Not that I didn't think there should be justice served, but my heart always ached for those who don't know Jesus. Their actions being a reflection of that. I was always told that I would feel differently if it happened to me, but as it's happened to my own father, I think I still feel the same. There has been anger, sadness, grief, and confusion, and part of me wishes I could despise the man who did this to my father, but I can't get any, of, any part of my heart to hate him. All that I can find is myself hoping and praying for this man to truly know Jesus. I thought this might change if the man continued to live, but when I heard the news that he was in stable condition, part of me was relieved. My prayer is that someday down the road, I'd get to spend some time with the man who shot my father. Not to scream at him, not to yell at him, not to scold him, simply to tell him about Jesus. I've spent the past few days thinking about what it was like for my daddy to lay lifeless in the flesh, but full of life with our Father in heaven. I wonder what it was like to reunite with his father, to see his other officers who fell in the line of duty, but mostly to sit at the right hand of Jesus. I can imagine it's a much better place than here. There are plenty of stories of his time spent as an officer, but there was another side of him that I had the privilege of knowing as my dad. He was goofy, incredibly too sarcastic, there was always a joke up his sleeve. There was never a volleyball, baseball, or football game he was going to miss. Never a band competition he'd miss either. Not for me or my siblings. He was our biggest fan on and off the court and field. He encouraged me, pushed me, and supported every decision I made. There were many days when I was a whenever I was a baby like Doug said, he'd take me to the shooting range to train with other officers. 
and a few of them, like Doug, would watch me while he went to qualify. I'll never forget when I was younger, he would drop anything for me. Quite literally, on one of those days, he'd physically drop me as he got me out of the car. <laughs> I'll never let him move that down, and he sobbed like a baby when he did. All jokes aside, he really has dropped anything and everything for us. If I wanted to dress up as Dorothy from Wizard of Oz for my fourth birthday, I wasn't doing it alone. He'd put all the face makeup on, make the costume, just to dress up as the scarecrow alongside me. That's always been his heart, and we would always be the highest priority. I'm resting in the obedience of my dad to the Lord. In Isaiah 6, 8, it says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. And I don't ever think my father knew that his yes to the Lord would ever end up being like this. But as I look out to you all today, this is just a picture of the faithfulness of Jesus. I know my dad is looking down today with the biggest smile on his face in the arms of Jesus. I know as he entered the gates of heaven, he was greeted with, well done, good and faithful servant. What a moment that was. The days, weeks, months, and years ahead will surely be hard, but at the same time so sweet, knowing I'm one second, one minute, one hour closer to being with him again. There was still a lot of life I was looking forward to spending with him. 18 years with you, Daddy, was just not enough time. You were faithful, steadfast, kind, loving, selfless, and hardworking. On December 3rd, you were silenced, but you will forever live on in my heart today and all the days to come. I'd do anything in the world to see you again, to laugh with you again, to watch your terrible dance moves, to listen to another joke, to practice volleyball with you, to watch birds with you again, to catch one more fish, to wrestle one more time, to hug you again, to hear your voice at last. In my deepest wound, I saw the glory of Jesus, and it has astounded me. You're my hero, Daddy, and I'm so proud to call you my father. I love you most, and I'll see you someday soon. 